If you're looking for a way to increase student engagement or simply have an artifact for formative student assessment, then Nearpod might be the solution for you. Today's tutorial will walk you through how to create and launch a lesson, and it will also show you how to check student progress as students begin to make their way through each of your individual Nearpod lessons. To begin, you first need to get to Nearpod, and to do that, you have two options. You can either go to the Nearpod website, or you can add Nearpod as a Google Chrome extension. For today's purposes, I am going to use the Nearpod website. When you get to the website, you will need to sign up or create your account. And so I am going to go ahead and select teachers. And because I already have an account, I am going to select login. When I log in, I'm going to be able to use my single sign-on. So I will select login with Google. I will select my K-12 account. And then I'm going to be taken to the dashboard of my Nearpod page. I have my lessons right here in the center of the page. And then I also have some options over here that I will talk about later. Today's purpose of this video is going to focus on launching and creating lessons. And so to create a lesson, you are going to go up here to new and you will select this option. You have two different options right here. You have an option to select a lesson in Nearpod or select a lesson in Google Slides. Today, we are going to focus on creating a lesson in Nearpod. I will provide a lesson on Google Slides at a later date. So go ahead and select lesson in Nearpod. And when you select this option, you are going to be prompted to the dashboard for lesson creation. Creating lessons is actually quite easy with Nearpod. You'll see that you have the option to add a slide and you're going to go ahead and select that option. So you'll add a slide. And then when you add a slide, you have several different options for slide types that you can go ahead and add. I'm not going to be going over the different types of content and activities in this tutorial. I will provide a brief tutorial on what those are like at a later date but you do have the option for several different types of slides, and you also have the option for several different types of activities that you can embed within your lesson as well. So I'm going to go back to content and I'm just going to select slide. So if I were creating my lesson, I would go ahead and add just a blank slide and the slide will actually pop up for you and you have some different types of backgrounds that you can choose. You simply just select it and it will modify itself for you. You can go ahead and add text. And when your slide is ready, you'll just go ahead down here and select save and exit. Once you have done that, you're then brought back to the dashboard where you have the option to add an additional slide. And then again, you get to choose from your content and the activities that you're going to add. I'm going to add just one more slide for demonstration purposes here. We'll pick this background this time, add some text, we'll save and exit. And at this point, I'm going to say that I'm done with my lesson and I'm ready to present it. So when you get to that point and you feel like you're ready to go, you can either share your lesson and that would be shared as a link. You can either preview your lesson or you can save and exit. And so what I am going to do here is save and exit. And you're going to go ahead and title your lesson. I'm going to select a grade and a subject and then I can go ahead and save and exit. When my lesson is complete, it is then going to pop up in my lesson dashboard and you'll see that right here. So as a teacher, then I need to take this lesson and I am going to teach it to my students. So in order to make your lesson live, you're going to go ahead and select this option right here to teach. And when you select teach, you have three different ways that you can teach this lesson to your students. The first option is with live participation. This is the option that you would select if you are face to face with your students and you are going to be working through the Nearpod lesson with them. 
There is an option for Zoom. However, I am not going to cover that in this tutorial because T Area School District does recommend the use of Google Meet. There is also a student paste option. This is an excellent option if you would like to assign a lesson as homework or if you would like to use a lesson as a flipped classroom experience. I'm going to pick live participation just so you can see what this option looks like. When you pick live participation, you are going to be provided with a code that you will give your students and they will use this code to join Nearpod. You could, as a teacher, just present this code up on the board for students or you could kick it out to Google Classroom, or you could even kick it out to Remind since our district is using that for communication purposes. And it also does tell the students where they need to go themselves, which is to join.nearpod.com to be able to enter the code. If you would like to give the students multiple options for completing the lesson, they can also complete this on their phone as well, but that would be up to your discretion as the teacher. No matter which option you select, so if you select live or if you select student pace, you're still going to receive that code that you will need to provide to students in order for them to be able to join the Nearpod lesson. So remember, this is a live view that you're seeing on the screen right now. And then as the teacher, I would work through this slide presentation with my students. Now, mine is not interactive because I haven't added any activities or things like that. That will be provided in an additional tutorial. But if you did have activities, let's say it was a poll. If I went to the second slide, the poll would pop up and my students would be able to actively engage in that. Just a couple of things to also note while you are presenting live down here in the lower portion of the screen, you will be able to see the number of participants that have joined your Nearpod session. You can also see the number of slides that you have and the number that you are on within that slide. And then you also have the ability to hide student names. So if you are including activities like polls or quizzes or competitions, and you don't want the students to necessarily feel called out if they would answer incorrectly, you could hide those student names so that the class could still see the results, but they wouldn't be able to see who answered what. So those are the basics of taking a look at a lesson. I'm going to go ahead and leave this. And what I would like to do is show you a few more parts of the dashboard. And so if you take a look over here on the left hand side of the screen, you will see reports. Now the reports are an excellent option for teachers to be able to use to assess their students. As students start to complete their lessons for you, all of the results from the activities that you include within the lesson will automatically generate for you so that you can see what the student answered without you having to go back in and look at 28 different answers from your students. If you would select reports, you would see your reports pop up here as students start to complete them. And you would simply just click on the report and then you would be able to see all of your student results. And you'll also have the option to export the results to a Google spreadsheet if you would like to do that. There is also a Nearpod library. So if you are maybe not wanting to create your own lesson and you would maybe want to use something that's already been created, there are hundreds of lessons to choose from within Nearpod. And the nice thing about this is that you also can narrow down the content by subject area and by grade and by resource type. So if you're looking for bell ringers, you can look for warm ups, and that's what you could have students work on as they're entering the room at the beginning of class. So that pre made content is an excellent option for teachers if they also don't want to just create things from scratch. One other option that I would like to show you in this tutorial today is the quick launch option. So let's say that as a teacher, you don't need to necessarily present an entire lesson, but you would like to have some active engagement, maybe while you lecture or maybe while students are working in groups and you want to break up that group work to come back as a whole class. If you would like to do something like that, there is an option up here in this upper right corner called Quick Launch. And so if you select Quick Launch, you'll see that there are options such as open-ended questions, draw it, timer, and uh, collaborate board to be able to utilize with your students. So if you would select, we'll just use open-ended question for our example today. 
I could create an open-ended question that I could have students respond to without having to have that activity embedded within an actual lesson. You wouldn't necessarily keep record of student answers with this. It's just a more engaging way to ask students questions throughout the class period. This has been a brief tutorial on how to create and launch a lesson in Nearpod. It also showed you how to view and access student progress in the report section. At a later date, I'll be providing an example of how to create a lesson through Google Slides, as well as showing you what the different slide types and the different activity types look like as well. I hope you'll join me for that lesson, and I hope that you'll be able to use this Nearpod application in order to get your classroom to get moving around, get it a little more engaging, and to use that formative assessment with your students.